Bob Woodward is a, a pretty, you know, a, he's a good journalist, right? Prolific journalist. And he apparently sat on some tapes for a while of President Donald Trump downplaying the coronavirus. Uh, and I want to I want to play you one of these recordings uh, and then you know, you kind of like get a reaction, kind of break it down. And so what was uh, President Xi saying yesterday? Well, we were talking mostly about the uh, the virus, and I think he's going to have it in good shape, but, you know, it's a very tricky situation. It's, uh, Indeed it, goes, it, it goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. You know, the touch, you don't have to touch things, right? But the air, you just breathe the air, and that's how it's uh, passed. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. You know, people don't realize we lose 25,000, 30,000 people a year here. Who, who would ever think that, right? I know. It's, I mean, much it's pretty forgotten. amazing. And uh, then I say, well, is that the same thing? For, this is uh, more right. deadly. This is 5 per, you know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. So... Understand that this happened back in February. That's when he was talking about this while he was publicly not saying a whole lot about the virus. Uh, and so here he is admitting this virus is pretty dangerous. This virus is pretty deadly. And maybe we should take it seriously. Uh, and yet at the same time, publicly, he's saying, no, nah, not going to be a problem. Jank, what do you think? Yeah. So I think that this is telling on a couple of different fronts. Uh, so one is what everybody's talking about, which is Bob Woodward sitting on the tapes uh, if, until his book's about to come out. Uh, he now has a bunch of um, excuses that would be best described by uh, Joe Biden's favorite word, malarkey. Um, so, oh, well, you know, I wanted to verify the truth of the thing. No, dude, you got him on tape saying it. You, you don't have to verify your own tapes. Uh, did you save it for the book? Of course, of course you saved it for the book. Everybody knows that. Same with John Bolton mm -hmm. and not testifying it during the impeachment hearings. So please, please save us the bullshit of you pretending that it has anything to do but you making money on your book, okay? So now, but there's two other parts of this that people are not talking enough about. So one is that, holy cow, this, see, this is why I predicted it turned out I was wrong and I'll... And, they, and I'll tell you why I was wrong, but this is why I predicted that Trump would leave office before his term was up, because he's so maniacally stupid. Who would sit down with Woodward, let him tape it, and not get an agreement that it won't be aired until after the election? Who's that dumb? Who's that dumb? And Trump is that dumb. And of course, I was wrong about my prediction, not because of anything about Trump, but because it turns out the Democrats are even more incompetent than even I could have imagined. And I bet him on a 10 out of 10 on incompetence. I mean, any halfway decent party, no, a 10% decent effective party would have driven Trump out of town by now. Yeah, but remember, this is the party that uh, basically nominated the weakest, uh, not just once, but the weakest nominee twice to go after Donald Trump. Uh, and look, uh, we're lucky right now. Uh, like I, I could get into the polling, but it, that might take forever. Uh, but for now, so far, Biden has a lead. But who knows how long that's going to last? Even with this, and understand, like uh, I can, I can, I can kind of get where Bob Woodward, you know, where this revelation, like it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because the people who are going to vote for Trump are still going to vote for Donald Trump. It doesn't matter to them if he's been sitting on this. I don't think that core support that I think roughly a third of the country, uh, even though we've seen some cracks and I've reported on this before, I think the third of the country is still going to be with Trump, regardless of the fact that he's been sitting, you know, that, that he's been saying these things in private. You, you know, what's funny. There's uh, Hillary Clinton 2016, the public versus private face, right? This is the public face of Trump versus the private face of Trump. Yeah, 100 percent. And and so. I'm actually surprised that he seems more lucid in private. Like he he seems more of a, a bungler and a bumbler uh, in public where he's like, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, nobody knows what it is. Uh, meanwhile, he goes, talks to Woodward and he's like, oh, no, it's airborne. 
uh, you know, the flu is one less than 1% death rate, but coronavirus is 5%. I'm like, that's actually ironically, maybe the most uh, lucid and intelligent I've ever seen him uh, in the midst of accidentally torpedoing his own campaign. Um, but, but I want to mention the third thing too. So everybody's talking about the coronavirus deaths and how he knew mm -hmm. it was terrible and didn't do anything about it for good reason, obviously. Mm -hmm. But there's other giant giant revelations that are barely getting any press so far that would sink any campaign any president like it's like the fourth news event of the day oh by the way his own secretary of defense was assembling the cabinet to take out the president because he thought he was mentally and morally incapable of doing the job holy cow holy cow <laughs> that makes nixon look stable and decent uh and it, it just no other president in our lifetimes has come within planets within galaxies of, of being that incompetent and and yet that's like the third biggest news story of today i feel like we're living in an era of information and in in the case of trump stupid overload right we are constantly bombarded and i think this goes to trump's advantage of just bullshit from all angles, every side, we are constantly assaulted. And, that, and, 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 and like for us progressives, it really makes it very difficult to focus on things like policy, right? It's wonderful for news cycles. It's wonderful for our channels, obviously. Uh, and, you know, mainstream news is having a, a fun time because they never have to talk about policy, right? And it's a result of having, uh, you know, insane clown president. It basically... <laughs> You know, Jeff, actually, that's such a great point. I want to build on that uh, for a second. Sure. Because, uh, you know, we often talk uh, in, in progressive circles and on the Young Turks, et cetera, that, uh, that the mainstream media never does policy. And so <laughs> that, that's not news to our viewers collectively. Um, it, but, um, I, you know, until now, I, I never put two and two together that, that, like the reason they love Trump so much is because they love the circus and to, and everybody in that audience is screaming, of course, right? But, um, but partly because it allows them, just like you said, because it allows them to never talk about policy and not feel guilty about it and not feel any sense of like, hey, I don't have to eat my broccoli because I, I've got a guy, so I've cast a bunch of characters in my soap opera and uh, and I know folks who tried out for the Don Lemon role and they were almost all African-American because it was a role it wasn't hey who's the top news anchor to get the nine o'clock slot or whatever it is right mm -hmm. so these are all roles they all try out they audition for these roles and so that's why I say no offense that one particular person is a system right, it, right. they're news actors in these roles and so now the starring uh, role has gone to Donald Trump of Captain Chaos. And so this, you know, the, <laughs> this uh, great evil character they have, and I naively have this whole time thought, even up until very recently, that they were in the news business. And they're not, they're in the soap opera business. And if you're mm -hmm. in the soap opera business, you can't ask for anything better than Trump. I'm gonna add, we'll add one last thing to that, uh, because I just, because I'm writing a book, it's called Justice is Coming. If you want to pre-order it, uh, great. It's going to take a while, by the way. Just I want to be clear about that. But justice is coming. Book.com is how you do it. Anyways, it, I was doing research for that. That's why it came top of mind. And and uh, during 2015, as Bernie Sanders was closing a 50-point lead on Hillary Clinton, uh, he was covered for 10 minutes on primetime news during that entire year, whereas Donald Trump was covered for over 230 minutes. 23 times the size of Bernie Sanders. Uh, Joe Biden, who was not running, got covered for 56 minutes. So it was a decision that the, uh, the people who were casting the soap opera made. Trump is going to be a great uh, character in this soap opera. And Bernie Sanders, who keeps talking about policy, boring. Okay, that's not going to play well in our little soap opera. So we're going to try to eliminate him from the cast of General Hospital. Uh, and and the way we do that is by doing what's now known as the Bernie Blackout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, 
you know, we kill b- two birds with one stone metaphorically, right? Bernie Sanders can't go and, and spread his, dang- you know, quote unquote, dangerous policies, his, you know, socialism, ooh, scary, right? Uh, and that's, by the way, that's the other character that they would cast him as is the evil socialist villain, right? Uh, Chris Matthews, you know, famously said, Bernie Sanders, he's, he's going to take us out to Central Park and execute us. You know, I, I can't do a good Chris Matthews impression. I can do a pretty decent Trump, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you don't have to do a Chris Matthews impression anymore because then he's not on uh, TV. Uh, yeah, he only implied that he was going to get executed by Bernie this is Sanders. True. He didn't actually this say true. it. <laughs> this is true, but he might as well have came, you know, just came out and said it openly uh, because we all knew what he meant. Uh, but at the same time, they get to get rid of Bernie Sanders, as you said, uh, and and not have policies which would affect them, as you said, that they're very well paid news actors uh, in the media, you know, billion dollar corporations here, and they get to do 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 do. They get their clown show. Hundred um, percent. And but and you know what's interesting is that in a sense, his own cabinet was more concerned about the clown show, filled with like massive right wingers, guys mm. we can't stand. And we don't agree with on anything, right? But they were more concerned than cable news anchors and executives. They had more concerned than I would argue the Democratic leadership. Nancy Pelosi famously said when she was not impeaching him, uh, like two and a half years in, she said, well, he we raised a lot of money off of Trump. Meanwhile, Dan Coats, his intelligence uh, head, is going around talking to other cabinet officials going, I, I think Putin controls him. I think the president is under the control of the leader of Russia. And so like he's losing whatever little hair he has left on his head over it. And meanwhile, Democrats and and CNN and New York Times are like, (laughs) I I do slightly disagree with the whole, you know, Putin controls, uh, you know, uh, Donald Trump kind of thing. I, I think, if anything, it's Donald Trump and his financial, you know, uh, ties or whatever financial possibilities or assets or whatever financial help that they you know, might have received from investors, including the oligarchs in Russia. But that's like a, I feel like that's a separate discussion. It is. I, I just want to be clear about two things. OK, I, I definitely don't want to get sidetracked into that. Definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so every I think most people both know by now uh, that I'm in the camp of Donald Trump is 100% controlled by Putin, and it's based on his financial ties, not having anything to do with the election or anything along those lines. He borrowed money from the Russians. The fact that investigators and Democrats and reporters have not been able to uncover that when it's just sitting right there in Deutsche Bank drives me out of my mind. I will be proven 100% right. I have no doubt of it. But that's not why I brought it up. I brought it up because his own cabinet thinks that. <laughs> you know, and and so... At a minimum, he is acting so irrationally and so against American interests that they're like, you know, maybe the answer is easier. No, he's just clinically unintelligent. Like he only has two brain cells uh, bumping around in there. And and uh, Dan Coates mistook that for being controlled by Russia. But they, his own cabinet's hair is on fire. Absolutely. And you know that once... Donald Trump is out of office one way or the other, there are going to be a, 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 you know, a flurry of books saying, I was, I was in there, I was in the back, and I was pushing back against Donald Trump every single oh, day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Expect it. Yes. <laughs> it's already yeah, happening. Every one of them is going to write a book, and everyone's going to pretend that they were pushing back and trying to help the country. They're all unbelievable liars. They've mm-hmm. all betrayed this country in ways that are immeasurable. And for God's sake, Jim Mattis, if you were thinking of assembling the cabinet, well, say something. There's an election going on right now, you. All right. Anyway, I'll try to spare <laughs> some more adjectives. But the same with John Kelly. He basically spits on your son's grave. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to say anything about it after the election uh, uh, until after the election. Well, what's the point? Are you a patriot or are you not a patriot? The right. country's on the line. The Constitution and democracy is on the line. Either get in the battle, if you will, or never, ever talk about it again. <laughs> 